Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. In today's video, we are going to discuss about, you know, uh, interview questions. So let us thank our subscriber who has shared us this question so that it can be of help to others who are preparing. I would definitely encourage you guys to please share your questions or experience with us so that, you know, it can help all those who are in this journey. So let us get started. This is an L2 round or might be l3 not sure but it is you know definitely about that and the reason i'm saying is you know all of these are scenario based questions okay so none of them you see from here are theoretical questions so let us try to solve one by one how to remove abc text from table okay so i'm just trying to create a simple uh, view here based on that we'll try to understand so there are two approaches to this now the user wants to remove this ABC. How? One approach is you can simply go here and change it to polygon. Everything will be gone. Or other approach would be, you know, we can create a calculated field called as blank and we can write as a space. You know, we can use this too. Okay. So up to you. You can, you know, at least answer this in an interview. Second question is highlight a month with the maximum and minimum sales for each subcategory. Okay. So again, like say I'm taking my sales here. Okay. We have some sales value, right? If I try to sort it. So for each category you take furnishing is our lowest subcategory and chase is our highest subcategory, right? Now I want minimum and maximum here, right? For each category, we want a minimum and a maximum value and we want to highlight this right so it is within a month now you can do it within a month or you can take whatever the granularity you want but i'm trying to take it with respect to category and subcategory so that you know we can understand so first step what do we need to do we need to find out minimum value right so i'm just trying to do that so i'm just writing it as a minimum here and i'm first we need to write a nested LOD. First, I'm trying to get my sales at category and subcategory, and then I'm trying to get some of sales. Simple. Okay. On top of this, now what will happen? This value, whatever you are seeing on the screen, this value will be coming. Like say at category, at subcategory, our values are freezed here. Now, when I say again fixed at category, I'm just using minimum of this entire value that I'm getting, which means what will happen? So this four values will be passed here. Out of this, we want a minimum. What is the minimum? 95. So from this calculation, we will get that. Okay. So if I go apply and if I try to drop it here, you see we got 95, right? The same thing, we just need to replicate it for maximum. Okay. I'm just duplicating. And instead of minimum, I'm just trying to take it as maximum. Okay. And here, instead of min, you will write as max. Now, what will happen with this? Whatever the maximum value is there. So this we got, right? So two steps we are done. So we have you know, found minimum value. We have found maximum value, right? Now, what do we need to do? We need to highlight those two values, which means what technically we should highlight this 95 and this one. So what I'm doing is again, I'm trying to write another calculation, like say max and min. Okay. Now, if my sum of sales is equal to either my minimum value, so I'm writing sum of my min, okay, min calculation or sum of sales is equal to my maximum value, okay? Then what I'm doing, I'm trying to categorize this as one, else zero, and I'm ending it. So at any given point of time, you can think that, you know, my sum of sales will either be equal to this or this, then one, otherwise zero. So when it matches, it will print as one. Otherwise, in all the other cases, it will print as zero. Clicking on apply, OK. And I'm just trying to convert this into discrete. And I am just dropping it on color shelf. We got two colors, min and max. OK, that way we can highlight. OK, so 
this is a very interesting question i think it was asked many times so you need to you know break it down in steps what you need and how you need to proceed based on that you will be able to solve this type of questions again show grand total in stacked bar chart again this is an interesting question so again uh, you know i can take this and drop it here maybe if i try to bring region onto my view we will get or region onto color we got a stack the bar chart. So first step put done. So what did they tell? They want to show grand total in stacked bar chart. So this is our stacked bar chart. Now I'm just going and clicking on show mark level. So we got sales for each region. Okay, now we want total. So I can go to analysis tab and click on total and show column grand total. We got this. Again, I can go here, add all subtotals. We got totals for each of this. this. Okay, so this is one way we can show each of this on top. Okay, you can, uh, where is this? Yeah, this one. Or if they don't need this. Okay, so I'm just uh, again dropping this. Okay, I'm just uh, removing all of those totals. Remove all subtotals. Totals again, this also I don't need. Okay, and I will remove this from the view. Sales. I'm dropping it on the label. So for each of this, we got uh, this one, maybe, okay. We want the region on color. Now the second approach would be, you can click on this axis, add a reference line, okay. We want total to be calculated. So I'm selecting total from this drop down. We got this but we want that per cell. So when I click on that, we got total, right? So instead of uh, computation here, we can show the value. Now see here, for each subcategory or which is for each stacked bar, we got a total. For each stacked bar, we got a total. For each stacked bar, we got a total. So this way you can approach. So this is again another way of doing. So this is again this one. So again, next question, conditionally format a top two subcategories for each category by sales. Again, this is an interesting question. Okay. So everything is related to category and a subcategory. So I'm just removing this. So we'll also remove this. I want a, a normal one. Okay. So we got you know, category wise, subcategory and sales. So first thing what I'm doing is I'm trying to find out rank for this two. Okay, we want to find out top to right. So I'm just saying rank of sum of sales and we want it by descending order. Okay, so I'm just apply. Okay, so you can always suggest alternates. If you find any, we can discuss in the comment section. Do let me know what will be your approach in this kind of situations because you might have multiple approaches to this question. You might have different approaches to this and to this as well. Okay, so let us see how many of us will be able to find an all right. Now we got rank computed on the whole. We want this to be you know, calculated at a subcategory level. So from compute using option, I'm selecting subcategory. Now, if you observe for each category or for each subcategory, ranks are being categorized. So chase is our first, furnishing is our fourth. Likewise here, storage is first, envelopes, fastness is ninth. Right, so every category you take is starting from one. Right, we got this. Now, what do we need? We need top two in each this one. How we'll be able to do again same calculation I'm trying to use or same approach that we have used for this min and max. I'm trying to do step one in this. What did I do? I have found out rank for each of this, and then I'm trying to take uh top two ranks okay now what will i do if i'm taking this again i'm just holding my control button and dragging this here simple okay if my rank is equal to one or my rank so again same is equal to two then i'm categorizing it as one else zero for me end it Okay, now what will happen whether your rank is equal to one or your rank is equal to two, I'm grouping them as one, else zero, click on apply, okay. 
again we can convert this into discrete and if i drop it on color at top two are colored in one okay now i can simply edit this okay so for one i'll put maybe blue for zero i will just gray out or just put black whatever we want we can do okay so this way we can solve this type of problem so i'm just double clicking i want black color okay this way we can do okay so top two items from each of this we can highlight so this is little interesting okay next is last day of current month again you know uh, we have done this or we have solved this uh, you know many times so for this we need a uh, last day of current month right so we will take uh, with respect to today so first i am trying to get uh, take date trunk date trunk of day part i need from today okay so let us see what will be the result and then we'll try to evaluate okay i'm just dropping it on the label and i'm trying to make it exact date so we got today's date right so 5 8 now we want last day of current month okay so it gave today's date okay uh, maybe i'll take month part here not day so we got first day we want last day right so so i'm doing date add so i'm just uh, doing again month part i want uh, to add one month so that we can go to next month uh, and we can do a minus one from that data of month of one of uh, this one. Okay, so to, to, so what did we miss? Okay, so let us see what will be the result. So we went to first day of the next month. So we are in eighth, right? Now it is giving us ninth. So now what I'll do is I'll simply do again date add, but day part I will do one minus, okay? From this date, whatever we are getting, date add of again, day. Okay, so whatever the day we are getting in this, I am trying to subtract minus one, okay? So let us close this. This bracket, I am closing it here and here. Okay. So one here. Yeah. Okay. I click on apply. We got last day of the current month. Okay. So if I check here, 31st. Okay. So what did we do here? First part, we did truncate it month. So with this, what we'll get? Uh, first day of the current month right but we want to go to next uh, first day of the next month so that we can come back minus one okay so understand the logic how we are trying to derive one month plus so that if you are in august we will go to september first right then after that if i do minus one from there it will go to last day of the current month so that is the logic okay so this you need to understand so this is how you can calculate you know last day of the current month okay so these were you know interesting questions that were asked in gmails okay i hope you have liked the video if it does don't forget to, you know you know share your comments and you know valuable feedback so that it can help others so that's it from my side in this video guys you know see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day